Oftentimes, even in the social media age, the most important news receives the least amount of coverage. We've countlessly covered again and again environmental racism. This is one of the few channels, I have to say, that in, that covers it as far as focusing on the black community. We talk about police brutality. We talk about injustices in the court system and, you know, different things like that. Redlining, gentrification. Um, all the things that discriminate against black people. When you go to work, you can be discriminated, or if you're filling out an application, there's certain ways you can be discriminated. Uh, cops may discriminate and stereotype you, but pollution doesn't. Uh, what you decide to put in your mouth as far as food, you can. You have a choice, but pollution doesn't care. Environmental racism, even the very act of People setting up an infrastructure that's environmentally hazardous, um, they decide to do that. But the pollution, it doesn't discriminate. It's not going to say, well, this is black people, so I'm not going to do my job and pollute. It's going to pollute. It doesn't discriminate. So I think you guys get the point by now. There's a new study out by the Lancet Journal, it was published a few days ago, that pollution disproportionately kills the poor and the vulnerable, which is where you'll see environmental racism. 92% uh, of pollution-related deaths occur in low-income and middle-income countries. So you, I think that can be... We stated before, children face the highest risk because of the small exposures of chemicals and early childhood that can result in lifelong diseases, disability, premature death, as well as reduced learning and earning potential. We know that there's, yes, there's educational, under, ed education is underfunded in, you know, inner city communities, but there's a lot of ADHD, different things like that. I know they like to relate that to diet, but um we have we have to look into the learning of how environment basically affects the learning the ability to learn also cleveland is i think number one in infant mortality so you look at premature deaths and different things like that in 2015 diseases caused by pollution were responsible for nine million premature deaths that is 16 percent of all global deaths Exposures to contaminated air, water, and soil kill more people than a high-sodium diet, obesity, alcohol, road accidents, or child and maternal malnutrition. They're also responsible for three times as many deaths, tuberculosis. They're also responsible for three times as many deaths as AIDS, tuberculosis, and malaria combined for nearly 15 times as many deaths as war and all forms of violence. So again, you have to question, why is this not receiving the most attention? Why are we always focused on Donald Trump? The video, when I talked about the Mogadishu and uh, Somalia truck, truck bombing that received little attention, even though 300 plus people have died, hundreds are injured, it's not receiving a lot of attention. And that's why al alternative news or real news that you will find on YouTube, on this channel, and other channels. Um, it's very important that you support it, that you share it, because this is the real relevant news. If this, this looks like it's probably one of the number one killers in the world, yet how many, how much coverage do you see this getting? There's also more environmental news I wanna discuss with you. London is gonna introduce a vehicle pollution tax um, basically on the older vehicles that use the diesel fuel. If you remember when we first covered the dump site video and I explained how diesel fuel was a carcinogen and I was trying to explain how dangerous it was to everybody. Back then, the uh, that was last year, the mayoral, mayoral debate in London, the number one topic was air pollution and diesel fuel. Nearly 9,500 Londoners die prematurely every year as a result of long-term exposure to air pollution, according to a 2015 study by researchers at King's College, London. The announcement for this tax came a few months after the Britain's High Court ruled that the UK government measures air pollution 
were failing to comply with the European Union rules on nitrogen dioxide limits. There's over 400 schools, 438 to be exact, in London that are exceeding the legal air qualities according to the London Mayor's Office. And based on the prior uh, news that I told you, it's more than likely in a poor and vulnerable community and these children are probably susceptible to learning disabilities or you know, difficulties learning. So it is imperative that you equip and spread this information to identify any environmental hazards in your community. It's a silent uh, killer. You can't really, you kind of have to educate yourself. This is something you kind of have to be proactive about. It takes an independent thinker. That's why um, this channel gravitates towards independent thinkers because independent thinkers are tend to be more proactive. They're not going to wait till something is popular. They're not going to wait till something is trending. Um, they, we have the ability to understand that um, we can think for ourselves. You know what I mean? So this is not like, oh, it's a police video and he shot him. We're going to protest about that. Or this white nationalist said something racist. Like, it's not as obvious so it takes a little bit of education and, you know, the least that I can do is provide examples, provide real life examples. Um, several people have died um, near this dump site. I don't know if it was environmental related, but, you know, it could be. So anyways, uh, stay tuned and I'll keep giving you know, more and more coverage on environmental racism uh, environmental health hazards and the effect on the community.